I'm Narelle Todd. And I'm Essie Susan Smith. We are the self-publishing author and marketing duo that has sold over 2 million books. But we didn't start out knowing how to sell books. Fast forward past many failed promotions and a lot of lessons learned, you will see how we went from self-publishing newbies to hitting the New York Times bestsellers list and making the USA Today bestsellers list 19 times and counting. We created the Get My Book Out There podcast to give you simple yet effective marketing strategies to increase readership and book sales so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, as well as some tips for staying mentally and physically well. Let's get started. We're talking to you today about audiobooks, and this time um, we're going to go into the marketing of audiobook. And we've got three easy steps for you in how you can get the word out about your audiobook. So our first tip is to actually create a separate page for you on your website. This has a number of different benefits. When someone comes to your website, you direct them there, they go straight to the audio book page or or a post. You're not distracting them. There's just the audio book. So they know that they can um, just buy, but it also gives them some other things that you can add in. So we've got samples. So Susan, SoundCloud, you use that a lot. How do you find that works for you? It is fantastic because I not only get followers that follow me on SoundCloud, um, you know, but I'm able to post the different samples there, which gives me a wider spread. And then on top of that, I'm able to take, they give you um, basically the coding that you need to embed it into your website. And so it looks really clean, really professional. And, you know, it gives a great sample for my listeners because a lot of my readers are listeners, but not all readers are listeners. Sometimes you have those that just like to listen to the book. So this gives them a one-stop place to go and listen to it, decide if they like the story. And I'm fortunate enough, I either give them either the first chapter if I don't have the retail sample, or I give them the retail sample that the narrators actually create. Absolutely. And it gives people a chance to sample, for want of a better word, obviously, the narrator, because some people are very particular about who they want uh, narrating their book. It's just allows people to get an idea and they'll know if the narrator is someone that they'll listen to. Last thing that you want to do is to buy an eight, 12 hour book and then have to listen to someone that's got a voice like fingernails on a talk board. So giving the sample allows the people, you know, the listener to actually sample it, decide if they like the rhythm and they, they can get pulled into the story. When I was looking for narrators, that was one of the first things I looked for when I had them reading. Did their voice pull me into the story? You know, when I found David, I mean, I literally had goosebumps go up my arms. He did such a good job bringing the characters and the story to life. And I've done the same thing with my foreign, even though I don't speak French or German, if I get lost in what the way their voice sounds, and I, I can hear enough to know what they're saying, it really pulls me in that I know I've got a good narrator. Our second point is social media and newsletters. Now, I know that this is bleedingly obvious that, of course, you would want to promote on your channels. I see so many authors who don't. So they almost put audiobooks in a category of its own and they don't talk about it. It's kind of like, you know, the talked about black sheep of the family. So you want to create a newsletter where you're just talking about your audiobooks, where you make it the star of the show. Um, You know, see a new release in an audio book the same as you would a new release for a book and do a newsletter which is just about that audio book rather than burying it uh, say in another regular newsletter for example. And it's so important because they may not realize because sometimes the ebook comes out and then the paperback or the ebook and the paperback but not the audio book because it does take a little bit longer to process and then get up. So and then if they decide hey I really love this ebook or this paperback then they may go buy it. So don't discount you know letting them know hey now I have the audio book available and I have a lot of people that will buy all three. And, you know, they're, they wait for the um, audiobook to come out because they are really excited. It's like, you know, uh, one of the things that my husband and I've been doing lately, we have date night every night now, 
with the pandemic. And one of the really cool things is we're watching things that we watched years and years ago, and it's like seeing them for the first time. And we're doing it with closed caption on because both of us have a little bit of a hearing problem, him more severe than I do. So it's been really, really neat to watch these movies with the closed caption on. So we're hearing them and reading it at the same time, and we're catching things that we had missed. So it just gives for, I think, a more well-balanced experience. Yeah. Definitely. I did that just last night with a movie, a really recent blockbuster movie, and I caught things and I thought I knew that movie pretty well. So absolutely, you know, watching, reading um, along as you're listening, certainly, you know, there's um, benefits there to getting perhaps some of the Easter eggs. And I know you like to leave Easter eggs in your stories. So, you know, that could be one way to find. Um, Our third tip is giveaways. So this involves codes that you often get uh, from the distributor. You know, you can get up to 10 codes and then these are books that you can then give away so you can run promotions. There's also with Audible, for example, you can actually run in your posts and some things like that membership you know, just promoting the membership side of things and you can take a commission from anyone who signs up to get your book. So a couple of different yes. ways there that you can actually use where your audio book is being held to, you know, help promote your book. There's other different mediums. I've even released um, an audio book on SoundCloud. So if you're wanting to do it and you've got a really short novella that may only be a few chapters, but it's a complete story and you want to give them a sample of what you're stories are like to listen to you can actually do put the whole book up on there the whole audio book and people can download it and you know you can tie it in with your youtube channel so that you can have links so that people can go to youtube channel and listen to it you can also do uh little snippets with a book trailer type where that retail sample is set with the book so that they can actually listen to it on youtube yeah. and then you get all the people that are saying can you please upload the rest of the book <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, so, and it's a great way then to do your cross promotion across the various social media channels as well. When you have your information in different places, it just means different people are going to be a different, you know, often people who are on YouTube, you may not find them elsewhere. So if you can tap into them in their preferred use of social media, um, then that draws them back into then, you know, say Audible or iTunes um, for them to pick up your book. In different age groups, because different yes. age groups go to different social media. So you don't want to discount 18 to 30 year olds who may be more on YouTube than they are on Facebook. And then, you know, the same thing, you don't want to discount the older crowd that may be on Facebook or Pinterest. You want to be able to give them as many opportunities to be found. And that's so essential. Another thing you can do is you can kind of promote with other authors who are also releasing audiobooks. So we'll leave that perhaps, let's do it next week. We'll do three more, a couple of others that we can add. So let's just stick with those three and um, we'll come back and we'll do part two uh, with some more tips for audio books because I know this is one that really is of interest to people. How do you actually market audio books? That sounds good to me. And it's great talking about it because then I'm also getting new ideas or saying, hey, you know, I haven't done this in a while. I need to do this. Um, let me try this new idea and then I can bring it back and say, yay, it worked or no, I didn't get this is kind of results that I got. That's one of the nice things about what we do is we basically use me as a guinea pig so that we can say, yes, it works. And then if it does, then we can try and replicate it with other authors. That really makes a big impact on your testing to yes. know, is this marketing working or is it not? Yeah. Better than the background that keeps glitching on me. <laughs> We were just talking about um, the split testing that we do yesterday because, you know, I was sharing with you some results that we found, which were contrary to what a, an expert had said was working. So, yes, but it always comes down to you have to test no matter what, as always. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. Don't forget the three tips and come back for part two next week. And we look forward to talking to you. Have a great one. Hey, thanks for joining us today. You know we've got way more information we want to share with you to increase your book sales. So please come and join me at facebook.com. Get my book out there.